are here at Kanaloa Octopus Farm playing with octopus. I love it. I'm here with the owner, Jacob. He's stuck to my hand. <laughs> yeah, that's <what>? fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, right? Yeah. My finger's not going to come off. Nope. Okay, tell us about this place. And earlier on Wake Up Today, we talked about the importance of this farm and octopus aquaculture. Um, but these guys are pretty fun. You get a lot of tours that come through here. Yeah, we do. We get a, quite a few people that come in. Our tours at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Uh, seven days a week, and people get to learn about them and see what research is going on over here. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think he likes my hand. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, what was that? <laughs> So tell me about octopus. They seem like very smart creatures. Yeah, they're very intelligent. They're, um, you know, scientists consider them to be uh, one of, or if not the most intelligent invertebrate. Um, so uh, it's really due to the, the size of their brain. And um, it seems that they're very good at problem solving um, and uh, just general awareness of their surroundings. Is that why you've got so many toys? That's exactly why we have so many toys to keep the, get some enrichment in the tanks while there's uh, no tours going on. Yeah. Um, they seem to really like people. They prefer human interaction more than, than the toys. Well, I want to know more about the research that you do here. So let's walk over to the other side of the building. Okay, perfect. Now here we are outside, and Jake, you were telling us that you do research here. We're not raising octopus just yet, right? Correct. Yeah, there's really no one has really figured out how to efficiently raise octopuses. At least the commercially important species, the ones that have a very small paralarval stage. Um, no one's really been, been able to figure out how to efficiently grow them in captivity. Um, so we're really trying to figure this out, trying to figure out what the problems are and address those problems and hopefully come up with a protocol to raise them efficiently. Okay, so tell us what happens out here in this tank. Uh, these are the uh, breeding tanks. So these are our, where typically our um, pregnant females or females um, our breeding females go into, um, and this is also where they lay their eggs. So we um, have caves, and we also have these egg-laying buckets um, that the females go into, and they lay their eggs on the sides of the buckets or on the ceiling of the caves on the inside. Um, recently, we just had some of those eggs hatch, and we have uh, tens of thousands of little baby octopus paralarvae uh, inside of this tank. Okay, and then from there, what happens? So from there, this is where the research is focused on. We, um, we want to do trials and, and figure out what is missing. Um, is it environmental? Um, is it nutrition? Um, right now we're focusing on nutrition. We really think that's, that's the problem. Um, so we're investigating different species of plankton to use as a live feed. And that can be quite difficult. Uh, right now we are feeding them copepods um, and also artemia, which most people know those as brine shrimp. Okay. Um, brine shrimp seem to be very, uh, not a very adequate food. So copepods seem to be a little bit better, but they're more difficult to raise. Okay. This is all so interesting, and I know it's been a very popular tour for tourists. Um, we're almost out of time, but I know that you guys are actually moving uh, just a little ways away because there's such a demand for these tours. Yeah, so we need a lot more space, both for the research and the, uh, the tours. The tours have gone really well. People seem to enjoy them. So we're moving into a much larger facility uh, opening this month. Um, we'll have some much bigger display areas and a lot more room for people because um, it seems that not everyone's able to get on the tours at the sure. moment. Jacob, thank you so much. Absolutely, thank You're you. You're doing good work. Thank you.